In this recording, we will look at how some properties of logarithms can help us to simplify expressions involving logarithms. First, let's talk about what we mean by a logarithm. And a common notation is log subscript a x. That means that y is the logarithm of x to the base a. What does that mean? Well, y is the logarithm of x to the base a if and only if x equals a to the power of y. That is, when we calculate the logarithm of a number to a certain base, we're looking at the power in which we need to raise base a in order to obtain the number x. So for an example of this, log base 4 of 64 would equal 3 for instance because in order to obtain 64 we need to raise the base 4 to the power of 3. And there are some useful laws of logarithms that help us simplify expressions and you'll notice with these three laws the main important thing is you must be in a consistent base for each of the logs for these laws to work. So the first one says, working in base A, say, log of x times y is the same as log x plus log y. Again, working in the same base A, log of x divided by y is log x minus log y. And the last one, working in a consistent base, log of x to the n is the same as n log x. So let's apply this to a couple of examples of simplifying logarithms. First of all, it's a fairly simple one. Now here, one convention with logs as well is often when talking about log base 10, people often just write log. Here I'm going to do a couple of examples in base 10 where we just write log. So in the first one, we want to simplify log 6 minus log 2. So that looks like the right hand side of law 2. Log x minus log y is equal to log x divided by y. So because it's log 6 subtract log 2, this will be log 6 divided by 2. We can just simplify that within the brackets to get log 3. And then using a calculator with the log button, to four decimal places, that is 0.4771. So let's look at a second example. This one's more algebraic, no actual numbers to calculate. How can we simplify the expression shown here in example two? Now, if we had several terms involving, let's say, just log a, we could combine those into a single term. Similarly, if some of these could be written just in terms of log b, they could be combined into a single term. So looking at the first one, log a squared, that reminds us of law 3, that log of a to the n is n log a. So log a to the power of 2 will just be 2 log a. Log b can't do much with that. Next one, 4, so I'll put that out the front, log a divided by b. That was the second law, that log of a divided by b is the same as log a minus log b. So that's multiplied by the 4. Next term, log b to the 5, that's the third law again. That's the same as 5 log b. Looking at the next one, log a b, that's the first law that log a times b is the same as log a plus log b. And the last one, log of the square root of b. What is the square root as a power? That is log of b to the power of a half if it's a square root, and we'll simplify that further at the next step. So what have we got? 2 log a minus log b b, that 4, we can multiply out those brackets now, so that will become plus 4 log a, minus 4 log b, plus 5 log b, stays the same, plus log a, 
plus log b and that log b to the half again because that's b to the power of a half that'll be the same as a half log b. So now we're pretty much ready to simplify this because we have a lot of terms involving log a and a lot of terms involving log b. So let's look at the log a terms. We've got two log a there, another four log a there, another one log a there. So altogether that is giving us seven lots of log a. Everything else is in terms of log b. We have minus log b, minus another four log b, plus five log b. So those just cancel to zero. But then we also have another log b and another half log b giving us one and a half log b, or three on two times log b. That is simplifying our expression, leaves us with seven log a plus three on two times log b, which you can see, thanks to the help of our log laws, looks a lot simpler than what we started with.